Good afternoon, everybody. Pigskin Pete here. Happy Monday to everybody. Man, is this college football offseason a long one, and we still got a long way to go. Same with the NFL season. Now, the AAF is really not doing it for me. I mean, I watch it because it's football, and I'll watch anything where they're throwing around a pigskin. But, um, you know, I don't uh, – it's, it's, it doesn't compare to NCAA football or NFL football. Now, the uh, NFL Combine is this week, so I'll be doing some coverage on that. That's exciting. And, of course, we've got spring ball coming up soon and the NFL draft after that. So, uh, a lot going on. But for right now, I was looking – into all the different conferences and all the different divisions in those conferences in the Power Five and uh, looking at what stuck out to me. And what I noticed was out of all the divisions in all the Power Five, the Big Ten West year to year is the most unpredictable division in the Power Five. Now, if you look at the Pac-12, you've got Oregon, you've got Washington. Uh, those look like the front, clear front runners to win the Pac-12. Uh, there may be a sleeper in there, Washington State. Uh, they've got a stud quarterback coming in who was a transfer from uh, the FCS, I think. But he set all the, the uh, yardage records for the FCS, so he's a, he's a good player. Uh, of course, USC, if they can get their stuff together, they may be able to put together something and challenge one of those guys if they make it to the Pac-12 title game. But other than that, the Pac-12 is not uh, all that interesting outside of uh, Oregon and Washington. Of course, the Big 12s, Texas and Oklahoma and pretty much everybody else. I mean, West Virginia made a run last year. They were in it all the way to the very end. They lost Dana Holgerson to, to Houston. Uh, they lost a t all of the real star players. I think it's going to be a, a rebuild in West Virginia. I don't see them being in, in competition to win the Big 12 this coming year. Now, the ACC is obviously Clemson and everybody else. The only team that even has a chance to maybe beat Clemson in a one-game scenario and uh, in a uh, ACC title game would probably be Miami, if I had to guess. And so there's a big question mark there. We'll see with that. The SEC is a little more complicated. Uh, Florida's getting better. Obviously, Georgia's good. Um, Alabama's still going to be the monster to beat in the West. Uh, but LSU and Texas A&M are teams uh, that are, are also getting better and will be interesting to see. But today we're going to talk about the Big Ten. Now, the East, we'll forget it. I'll leave the East for another day because with Urban Meyer leaving, uh, that leaves a little bit of a hole, even though I still believe they're the most talented team in the East and probably in the Big Ten. Uh, it's still unknown what's going to happen there. But the West, every year, is just impossible to figure out. So Wisconsin has been taking advantage over the past, say, five or six years of the fact that the West has been so unpredictable and really not that good. Uh, they were heavy favorites coming into the 2018 season to win the West, and they really had a bad season. Uh, had some uh, inexplicable losses against uh, mediocre teams. And Northwestern ended up winning the West before they got waxed by Ohio State in the Big Ten title game. But Northwestern, they lost like four games. All their losses were non-conference. So they didn't win a single non-conference football game. Every single game they won was in the Big Ten. And, of course, that was taking advantage of the fact that the Big Ten West just wasn't that good. But uh, let's just go through some of the Big Ten West teams. We, we might be able to eliminate a couple of these right off the bat, right? So Illinois with Lovey Smith. Uh, now, I did a video or a stream, I can't remember, uh, a couple of weeks ago talking about uh, hot seat coaches for 2019, for the end of 2019. I didn't have Lovey Smith on that list. Uh, several people pointed out to me he should be on that list, and I completely agree. Uh, Lovey Smith is just not getting it done. Now, Illinois is probably never going to be a, a great team. Uh, but when you hire a big name like that, a guy who's been an NFL coach at multiple places, uh, you would expect a little bit of a better performance out of them. But anyway, Illinois, I, I think we can all agree, is not going to uh, make any noise, even in the Big Ten West. Uh, next on the list, we have Purdue. Now, I think Purdue is a, a much better team. Obviously, Jeff Brom has that team rolling. And I say rolling, I don't mean like a 10 or 11 or 12 win team, but rolling for Purdue. Purdue's had... Uh, a, st a stretch of years where they just have really not been very good at all. And last year, they had a, 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 a pretty good year, especially for Purdue. But they are still Purdue, and I don't, I don't expect Purdue to uh, compete to win the Big Ten. Uh, they're capable, though, of beating pretty much anybody on any given day. Just ask Ohio State. They ran them off the field uh, last season. But as far as the Big Ten as a whole, I would still say that the Purdue is, is a mid-level team in the as in the conference as a whole so we'll we'll go ahead and eliminate Purdue from that conversation as well although they will be an interesting team to watch uh, next on the list we have Iowa Iowa is similar to Purdue one of these teams that's capable of beating anybody on any given day Iowa's a tough place to recruit to um, 
they don't really have the infrastructure or the money to really compete with some of these other big teams in the Big Ten, some of these uh, more storied programs. However, they are a blue-collar team, and they're, they're a tough out, especially at home, for anybody they play. But I'm still going to go ahead and eliminate Iowa. I don't think they have a chance to win the Big Ten. Uh, probably not even the Big Ten West. But they could. It's not out of the question based on all the other teams' uh, standings. Uh, but I'm going to put them – uh, it's say maybe a 10% chance to win that division. Kirk Ferentz has been there for a million years, and he'll retire there or he'll pick when he wants to leave. He's a great coach, but Iowa is Iowa. Uh, so let's see here. Next on the list, uh, one of the more interesting stories in all of college football, not just the Big Ten, Scott Frost and Nebraska. Now, ne Scott Frost inherited a, a terrible team uh, and just a, a dysfunctional program. Even though Nebraska is one of the winningest programs in all of college football history, uh, I think they have something like 40-something conference titles in their history. They have just been down for a long time now, and he inherited a dumpster fire of a team. Now, last year they got off to a terrible start, but they won four of their last six games of the season to go 4-8. Four 4-8 and eight. Four and eight's terrible, but I, I expect them to get better. They do have a Heisman front runner, or at least a top 10 Heisman front runner, and Adrian Martinez as their quarterback. He's a six foot, 220 pound guy. He can run all over the field. He can make all the throws. He's a really good player. And um, he'll be even better this year than he was last year. They also have some really good receivers and it's just going to take a little bit more time. I don't think one season's enough for Scott Frost to implement the type of offense that he's really looking at running there. Um, so I'd say Nebraska will win six or seven games, which is a big improvement from where they've been, but still not competing for the big 10. So keep an eye on Nebraska though. Um, who knows what's going to happen with them, but I still say six or seven wins is probably their ceiling for 2019. Let's see. Next on the list, we've got Northwestern. Now, look, Northwestern, I, I just mentioned that they won the Big Ten West last year, despite the fact that Wisconsin was a heavy favorite to win it. But um, they do have Hunter Johnson, who is the Clemson transfer. Uh, he sat out last year. Um, he was just one of many quarterbacks that transferred from Clemson last year like four quarterbacks he was people don't remember this about Hunter Johnson but when he came out of high school he was the number one quarterback recruit in the country five-star quarterback the only reason he didn't start at Clemson is because he came in a little bit green and Kelly Bryant won the job out over him and then of course last year Trevor Lawrence came in and took everybody's job and, and everybody just scattered like roaches all over the country including Kelly Bryant to Missouri but uh, Northwestern's an interesting team they certainly are capable of winning the West. I mean, they did it last year, right? Uh, Pat Fitzgerald, I think, is a very one of the top ten coaches in America. I think uh, they have one of the most beautiful facilities in all the country. But um, yeah, so I, I'd say Northwestern probably has as good a chance as any of the other teams in the West to repeat this year. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, Hunter Johnson can do. I'm a big fan of his. So I'm going to put Northwestern on that list as somebody that has a legitimate chance to win the west now to win the big 10 i'm not so sure about but to win the west yes i give them a 30 percent chance next team we've got uh wisconsin so this is a team that has again been taking advantage of the fact that the big 10 west has been so weak they have one of the best running backs in all of america jonathan taylor uh, you know, he'll, I'm sure he'll have a great year if he, if he can manage uh, to stay healthy throughout the year. Um, but Wisconsin is, again, they've been taking advantage of the fact that the Big Ten West has been down, but they still can't get over that hump and actually win the Big Ten. Um, but I say Wisconsin will have a bounce back year this year. I think they'll be better than they were last year. And so I give them uh, a similar chance as I give Northwestern to when uh the the big 10 west they have for whatever reason i was looking at their schedule they have one of the harder schedules out of anybody in the west um they play uh, ohio state michigan and michigan state for some reason i, don't, I can't figure that, quite figure that out i think somebody can fact check me on that but i think i remember seeing that and uh so that's a little bit of head scratching but so they out of all these teams that i just named they definitely have the hardest road to get to uh to to, to, to win the west and to win the big 10 uh, and, of course, if they win the West, they'll have to play most likely either Ohio State or Michigan or maybe somebody like Penn State uh, for the title game, which is no easy out for anybody. But uh, just based on the coaching, uh, the town alone, 
and just the, the, the entire infrastructure, I'm going to say Wisconsin has as good a ch- chance as anybody. So I give them a 33% chance as well. Last on the list out of the West, the Minnesota Golden Gophers and P.J. Fleck, you know, row your boat guy. So Minnesota is, again, I put them sort of like Purdue and Iowa, one of these teams that it's very hard to recruit to. Uh, they don't have as you know the name brand or the the type of money that places like uh, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan, uh, Penn State, all these other big name teams in the Big Ten have. Um, I do think PJ Flex got the thing going in the right direction. They had some really close games last year, really close losses against some really good teams, and they played teams tough. Um, there was something that came out in the news. You know, Jerry Kill was the former coach of Minnesota before PJ Fleck took over. Jerry Kill had some uh, some health problems, so he sort of retired for health reasons. Uh, so PJ Fleck comes in there. This guy's a big personality. He's he's a little quirky. He's weird. Uh, he he's very good at recruiting, and I do think he's a really good on the field coach too. But Jerry Kill made some uh, disparaging comments about PJ Fleck, saying that PJ Fleck cares more about himself than he does about the program, and, and more than he does about the players and that sort of thing. And PJ Fleck made a statement saying he was uh, highly disappointed with that. Um, but uh, they beat Wisconsin last year. Uh, there's some people, some some YouTubers, I'm not going to name any names, Spencer from Rover Sports, who think that P.J. Fleck and Minnesota are going to make a, a playoff run here in the next couple of years. Now, I, I don't agree with that. Now, he's entitled to his opinion, and I, I love Spencer. Uh, if you're watching, sir, uh, I respect your opinion, but not on this. <laughs> Um, I just don't think that, I mean, P.J. Fleck might be a great coach, uh, but he's not winning. He's not going to the playoffs at Minnesota, sir. It's just not going to happen. But I do think because of the state of the Big Ten West and the transition that's happening at some of these places, that Minnesota, if they win a couple of games that they normally wouldn't win, could, you know, come down to the end as far as winning that division. Now, I certainly don't think they can compete with any of those big name teams in the East but uh, they'll be an interesting team to watch. And I do like P.J. Fleck as a coach. I, I think he's a weird dude. Um, I, not my favorite character, uh, you know, personality-wise. But uh, I do think he's a really good coach and a good motivator and a good recruiter. So I'd say if Minnesota can somehow squeak out eight or nine wins, that would be amazing. And they might have a chance to actually win the West uh, but, and, and then get beat by Ohio State or Michigan or Penn State or whoever. So I'd say I still give Minnesota – uh, right around that 30% chance, and that's really pushing it. So th- the three teams that I'm, that I'm giving a shot here in the West this year are Northwestern, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And I'd say out of all of those, I'm obviously going to still favor Wisconsin out of all of those. Um, but still, uh, if any of these other teams, Nebraska, Purdue, or Iowa, can even make a run at this thing, I'd be shocked. But – Again, when you just look at the, across the landscape of college football right now, can anybody think of a more difficult division to figure out? Now, maybe the ACC Coastal is hard to figure out because we don't know what's going to happen with Virginia Tech, um, wh- whatever they're going to do. Uh, Pittsburgh won it last year, um, but Miami's you know sort of sitting in the weeds waiting to uh, sort of take these people apart, I think, and I do think that Miami should win that. But outside of the ACC Coastal and maybe – Maybe the Pac-12 North. I can't think of a more difficult division in the Power Five to go ahead and crown a winner in. Uh, three teams here that I think have a legit shot, but it could easily be more like five teams. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I will get into some other divisions as we go throughout the offseason. It's going to be a long offseason. I still need to get with some people, uh, some fans, uh, of teams to talk about their teams. I haven't forgot about you guys doing that, but it's going to be a long off season and uh, I can't do it all at one time. You've all been amazing. You've all been fantastic. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you soon to discuss the NFL combine underwear Olympics. Have a great day. Pigskin Pete checking out.